Okay, so this is going to be a continuation from yesterday's Denise emulator. And if you're new to Denise, it's a standalone emulator that emulates Commodore 64 and some Amiga models. So in this setup guide, then it's a part two. This is going to be exclusively looking at the Amiga side of the emulator itself. So I'm going to be showing you how to configure the controller, how to load up your games, which file extensions your games need to be in, and I'm going to look at many other settings where to get your kickstart ROMs, how to load in your kickstart ROMs, so there's going to be a lot in this one, so check this out. Okay then, so first things first, as I always say, if you've not yet subscribed, hit notifications and likes, please do so by the end of the video if you like what I'm doing today. And be sure to check out my plentitude of different Amiga emulation setups, uh, ranging from WinUAE to FSUAE, and I've covered Amiga a lot. I'm a big Commodore geek. So let's look at this. We're first going to head over to downloads Denise itself. So link's going to be in my description. Now we're going to get this from a website called sourceforge.net and this is a very trusted website so we're just going to go to download and it's going to give you a little countdown and that should be over like it says within a few seconds and it's only a 10 megabyte file so it's not going to take too long and there it goes at the top just there it's now downloading. So we're going to get that file and here we go. So it's in a zipped format. So what we're going to do is just drag out the contents of that zip. And I'm going to just drop this on my desktop. Just wait for this to do a thing. Okay. Uh, next thing I am going to suggest is you can get your Kickstart files from the Amiga Forever website. I've covered Amiga Forever in itself. Uh, you can find that in my standalone emulation setup guides. And you'll get the whole comprehensive set of Kickstart ROMs there, which go from, say, Amiga 1000 up to the Amiga CD32. Definitely worth your money, and it's definitely worth checking out the Amiga Forever, uh, which, like I say, I've covered on my channel. So once you've got your Kickstart ROMs, that's half of your battle done. The next thing you're going to need to know is that, to my knowledge, as of try testing this today, uh, this is going to accept... ADF file, so that's .adf. Now, if you're looking at something like LHA, .LHA, WHD load games, uh, this isn't going to work. So what I'm going to do then first is let's go into the emulator. So here is the folder I've extracted from that .zip I've just downloaded. And here we go. So what I've done first is created a Kickstarts folder and that's got some Kickstarts in it from Amiga Forever. And in my Amiga Games folder, I've got a really odd, bizarre game to be doing this with, but this is Beavers. <laughs> and um, actually, Beavers has got a bit of a history. If any of you read Commodore Format magazine in the early 90s, uh, the game Beavers, it was supposedly meant to be coming out for the C64. And I was looking forward to it at the time. Uh, it turns out years later that it was just nonsense, pretty much. It never had any plans by the seams of it. So anyways, this is Beavers on the Amiga. It's not the greatest game, but whatever. So we're going to open up Denise, and you can open this up with Denise.exe, which is obviously the executable. So just double left click on that. Uh, Windows protected your PC. Uh, just go to more info if you're using Windows 11 like I am and go to run anyway. Okay, so it's quite likely if you want to use the Amiga side of Denise, then it's going to open up in C64 mode. So to change this over, what I'm doing is just go into the Amiga tab at the top. And from here, I can either go to soft reset or hard reset. And it's now going to boot up into its own free version of a Kickstart ROM. So for those of you familiar with Amiga and something like WinUA, you'll likely be uh, familiar with this screen. And let's be honest, this isn't the greatest. So what we're going to do is actually go to control. And first thing I'm going to say is head over to Amiga Forever, get your Kickstart ROM files. And once you've got those, it's a case of going to control at the top. And if you just scroll down 
or rather just navigate down to Amiga configuration, uh, we'll find firmware tab just here. So just click on firmware. And what I do is you've got a host of different configurations here. So for example, we can put in configuration one, uh, one kickstart file, which might emulate the Amiga 500. Uh, configuration two, you could set this up for a kickstart ROM to emulate the Amiga 1000. Uh, but what I'm gonna do is just go to configuration one, and if I just say eject this now, when you're going to do this, if you do this, uh, this is going to be blank anyway. So what I'm going to do is just assume this is blank for you. And if I go to open, I'm going to install or rather insert my Amiga 500 Kickstart ROM. So go to open. And this is going to bring us into the Denise data folder, which I'm going to show you in a minute. But as we can see, uh, this is the ROM, the kick ROM it's booting from. And this is the black background you see. But I've got um, Amiga Forever Kickstart ROMs on my desktop. So uh, these are going to be in Kickstarts. And the ROM I'm going to be using for this is going to be the Amiga Kick 34005. Dot a 500 and you'll notice i got a couple of these and that's different revisions of the chips which commodore produced over the years for the amiga 500 so i'm going to go for this one just double left click and as we can see this one is now sitting in place so i need to leave this on configuration one now if i just close this down for now and go to amiga i'm going to go to hard reset And there we go, it's asking for the workbench disk. So what I'm gonna do next then is actually show you how to load a game. So I'm gonna go to Amiga, and from here we can go down to load software, and my Amiga game, which is Beaver, so like I say, is in my Amiga games folder, which is on my desktop, and we got two disks. Now I've selected a game uh, which requires two disks because the vast majority of Amiga games did require over two disks most of the time. Uh, but I'm going to go through the process of showing you how to load up your second or third whatever disk. So let's start off by loading disk one in. So just double left click. And here we go. So the process of loading is started. And I'm also going to be showing you a controller configuration. So if I go to Amiga, uh, I need to eject disks. Otherwise, the emulator is going to load straight up with the game inserted. So uh, if you do this, then just go to hard reset plus eject disks so it's empty. But we're looking at configuring controllers right now. So if I go to control tab just here, now we've got a C64 section, but we've also got the Amiga section. So if I go to Amiga configuration, now you'll find lots of different tabs at the top here, but we're looking at control. So open up control and we're then defining our controller that we've got connected with this. So for example, if I double left click on input, which says up and then press up on my D-pad, that's going to define. So if I press down on my D-pad, it's going to change. So this is your opportunity to set up your controller like I said i've already done mine now most amiga games probably just like commodore 64 games probably required two action buttons max uh, but we've also got options here for using a different button for something like turbo fire or auto fire personally that's not my thing it never has been but that's up to you if you want to define that so once you've done this what we're going to do next is just close this down and let's load up that game again so we're going to go to Amiga, load software, and of course, just load up disk one of two. So double left click on your disk. So I just press action button and that's responded and we're going to see another screen come up next. So here we go. So it says insert disk two. So there's a way around doing this. And if you do this wrong, then it's going to reboot itself or it simply won't work. So what we need to do is go back to the Amiga tab 
And what we're going to do again is go down to load software. Now, as you can see, I've got two disks here. So we got disk one of two, which I've already got inserted, or we got disk two of two. And of course, Beavers is asking for disk two. So instead of going to auto start, we need to press insert on this. As you can see, insert. And I've also got the emulated disk drive sounds. And by default, that's not going to work. So I'll show you how to do that in a minute. So to go to full screen as well on this, what we need to do is go to options at the top, full screen. So there we go, everything's working fine. Like I say, Beavers is by far the best Amiga game. It's, uh, well, it's not my cup of tea. But other things I'm gonna show you then, if we go to options and video, and if we go to input just here, you can also define which keys on your keyboards does what. So for example, uh, rather than going up to control wherever it was just a minute ago, I went to press on full screen. If I just double left click on full screen here and just say press Y on my keyboard, that is then going to give us a full screen. And obviously just press a sign at the bottom like I've just done. And something else to look at for video settings is if we go to Amiga just here and we go down to system management, just go over to image geometry. And from here you can change from native uh, as you can see in the background, we're changing there. So if I go to native, it's going to be stretched. Uh, we can add some integer scaling with that, which normally blurs the image a slight. But CRT TV looks best for me. Or we also got window. So window is going to give you a full screen. Uh, but if you want that real nostalgic experience and you don't want your games to look stretched, then just stick to CRTV. And if we just go under pre-select, full screen resolution. Now it says uh, the name of my processor and it's saying that uh, my processor has got XE graphics. So if I enable this and just go over to the side here, I can also change the refresh rates. So I'm just going to put this in 1920 by 1080p, which is 1080p. And whilst we're in this section, we can also play around with crop borders as well. So for example, if I go to uh, disabled, it's gonna look smaller, uh, crop complete. Uh, you know, so there's endless options there for your video settings, which is always good. And if I go over to presentation tab just here, then we can play around with uh, saturation, contrast, brightness, gamma, and we can even add scan line. So if we just, click on scan lines, for example, uh, we can see in the background, this now has scan lines. And obviously if you pull the slide either way, those scan lines are gonna be more prevalent, but a combination of playing around these settings could probably get you the ideal image that you're looking for. And we've also got view, SC video. So really there's lots there to look at. And just a minute ago, I was saying about emulating the sound of the disk drive in the Amiga. So to do this, go over to the audio tab and under drives, I've got this checked or rather enabled already, which is emulating the sound of a floppy drive. So obviously if you don't like this, personally, I love the sound of uh, floppy drives. I keep it enabled. You can then turn up the volume or crank it up. 
And for real tech geeks of Amigo out there, if you go to the system tab just here, we can lower or heighten the amount of chip RAM. And as you can see, as I'm dragging that slide around, it's rebooting itself. And um, you also got slow RAM and fast RAM. So, you know, all those things which uh, WinUA has got also. And like I said at the start of the video, this emulator only really emulates a couple of different Amiga models. So as we can see, the Amiga 1000, but to my knowledge, there wasn't many games for the Amiga 1000. Uh, it wasn't until the Amiga 500 came out that most of your rememberable games came out. So we also got a selection here of the full OCS chip or the A500 ECS um, chip. So again, that's up to you to decide whichever game you're going to be playing with. And under drives just here, we've also got a section where we can make the games load faster. So I've got mine already on max, but again, that's entirely up to you to play with. But the option is there if you want a slow wait in time for a more nostalgic experience or a faster loading process. And what I am going to lastly say is that the Amiga, much like the Commodore 64, uh, to play games with, say, controller, uh, just like C64, your uh, joypad or your joystick had to be in a particular port on the Amiga. So to do this, once you've configured your controller, like I've showed you just a minute ago, uh, you might find your controller is not responding to a game. So to do this, just go to Control, and just simply press Amiga Swap Joypads in port 2. And normally this is going to work. And just above this, we got Amiga port 1. And just make sure this is selected as Joypad 1. And Amiga port 2, again, we got the same option. Now, if you're going to be playing something like Cannon Folder or the Settlers, then you're obviously going to want to put this to something like Mouse. And again, just like Joystick, uh, if you find your mouse isn't responding, then just go back to Control and go to Amiga Joypads. So that's it for today's setup guide for the Amiga side of the Denise emulator. Uh, personally, I think the C64 is a much better part of Denise. Uh, obviously, we also got more established Amiga emulators out there, such as WinUAE and FSUAE, which will support lots of different file extensions, uh, such as the WHD load files I was talking about. And there's lots more options to be had in WinUA. This emulator, Denise itself on the Amiga side of things, it's just recently received an update uh, yesterday, which is where I first come across it. So in future, I'd imagine Amiga 1200 could be supported and even CD32. Uh, but definitely, its strong point is emulating C64. In fact, I'd go as far as saying that's probably my favourite Commodore 64 emulator, uh, whereas a lot of people say Vice is probably the best, but that's all down to personal opinion. So anyways, like I said, if you like what you see today, hit notifications, subscribe and like so you don't miss upcoming content. And like I say, I've covered Commodore a lot. I'm a complete Commodore fanboy, but whatever. And also follow me on social media. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, TikTok and Instagram and what I'm going to say next is stay retro.